And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Amy Vassell, you are chosen to review The Hunger Games! No, I don't want to! I, I volunteer! I volunteer to review! I will do it. The Hunger Games District 12 is based on the books, The Hunger Games, of course, and, well, I guess more importantly, the movie, although much of what happens in the movie uh, is not taking place in this game. This takes place at the very beginning. And this game has some interesting concepts to it, so rather than me give you background, because half of you watching has already know what The Hunger Games are about, let's take a look at the game, and then I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> Does the board look small? It does to me. I don't know. Anyhow, this is the board for the game, and what you're trying to do in this game is uh, get the most resources, and at the same time, not get chosen in the for to be the Tribune. Uh, being being Tribune is kind of a, a bad thing, because you have a 23 out of 24 chance of dying, but everyone has to take a color card at the beginning of the game for their color and put it in the glass bowl. At the end of the game, we're going to choose one of those cards, and whoever is chosen automatically loses. That doesn't sound too fun. Players are going to get a handful of resources. They're marked by this fire to show that they're starting resources. And resources are food, fuel, clothing, medicine. And they are each worth a certain amount of points. So I start with these, and then a round begins. And what we have happen on a round is, the first thing we do is we look and see if there's any special abilities or special things that happen. Now this looks complicated, but it really isn't. The book tells you exactly what to do, the rule book, uh, what to do on each of the rounds, but after a while you'll know what to do by heart. And so in round one, nothing happens. In round two, we add some more cards to certain spots on the board. In round three, we have some special abilities. Each player is going to get one special ability at the beginning of the game. So for example, let's say you're Pita. At the start of your turn, you may draw a card and place it on an empty bakery space, if one of them is empty. Prim. At the Everdeen House, instead of drawing one card, draw two cards and discard one of your choice. Players have one of their tokens, and they're going to put one of these tokens in a spot on the board. And you'll notice some of these spots have threes and fours. That's because they're only used in those number of player games. If you're playing a two-player game, you would cover up all the spots, and you could there'd be fewer spots to go to. So what are these spots for? Well... Let's talk about them. First one is the woods. When you go to the woods, you will draw three cards from the top of the deck and look at them. If any of them are food, <laughs> what are the odds of that? Food, food, food. You can take one and put it to, in your hand. So it's a way to get food. All the rest go to the discard pile up here. If you go to the bakery, you simply take all the cards that are there. There's only one card that's there for now, but you can take all the cards that are there. If no one goes there, there'll be more cards that are added. If you go to the hob, you'll take the pile of cards that are there. There's only two cards, but this will dramatically increase as the game goes by. You can look through them, and you can take one of those cards in your hand, and then you have to put one of your cards back into that spot. So let's say I put the food back in there. If you go to the storage, the capital storage, you just look through the discard pile, and you can take one card you want and add it to your hand, but then you have to discard a card from your hand. So same thing as the hob, but it's just big one big pile. Or you can go to the Everdeen house, in which case you simply draw a card off the top and add it to your hand. You can go to the Justice Building, which lets you switch places with someone else and take their action in case you wanted to take that specific action. And that's how the game progresses. During each round, we'll be adding more cards to the bakery, more cards to the hob. Uh, sometimes there are new special abilities that will come out. For example, uh, Mrs. Everdeen will come out later on. And if you want, you can take this card, which will make your medicine cards worth more at the end of the game, but you'll replace your own special power. And there's also phases during the game where you can trade, and there's also phases in the game where you have to discard down to six cards in your hand. And these are the big ones here. Turns 4, 7, 10, and the end of the game. If you notice on page 4, we'll pass a start turn token. And by the way, I, I should mention that when whoever has a start turn token goes first, and each person has to go to a spot, they must pick a different spot than they're in. So if I'm already in the woods, I need to get out of the woods and go to maybe the hob, for example. But the starting token will pass, and then you see it says pay one food. So I have to get rid of one food. And 
I will discard a food. Or if I can't discard a food, or for some reason I choose not to discard a food, then I need to stick another card with my color into the deck. You'll do the same thing on turn 7, except you need to get rid of a food and medicine. On turn 10, you'll need to get rid of food, clothing, and fuel. And on turn, and on the, at the end of the game, you'll need to get rid of food, medicine, uh, fuel, and clothing. So there's all those things that you have to get rid of. And then each of those times, you also have to discard down to 6 cards. At the end of the game, we're going to take, let's say, some more of these cards were put in. We're going to shuffle these cards up. And... We will draw one of them. So we draw this one. Red instantly loses. You're the Tribune. Yay. Sorry. You're, you're out. Everyone else will take their hand of cards that they have left and add up the points, plus maybe some points that they've gotten for their special cards. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Uh, so you can get a lot of points over the course of a game. You know, there's three resource point cards, and you want to keep those. And so sometimes you'll be stuck with the choice of, I have a three-point food card. Do I discard it, or do I add another card here to the glass ball, which gives me a chance to lose? You can be safe and always pay all your things, but then you might not have the resources. So, that's how you play the game. I have not read the Hunger Games books. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I did go see the movie along with apparently half of America this weekend. This game brings out a little bit of what's in the movie. I can understand it, and all the things in here make sense. And you know, that sense of anticipation, okay? This game, for me, all comes down to that final turn where you're gonna pull that card. The way I play this game is, forget giving the government or people what they need, food and clothing and stuff. I'm gonna forget all that. I'm gonna put more cards in the bowl because I'm gonna keep the best stuff for myself and I'll take my chances at losing because I'm either gonna lose big or win big. But, if you're really conservative and you pay everything and you have nothing at the end of the game, you might not be the one sent as tribute, but you're not going to win either. But I guess you beat the guy who was sent out. And even then, you have a small, minor chance of losing. That's going to drive some people crazy. They're like, why? Well, I even if I don't put any cards in there, there's still one card at the beginning of the game I could lose? Yes, there is. This is essentially a worker placement game, but you have one worker and it's not very tight. You could usually go to some place you want. But it's knowing how to manipulate them. The special card that you have, you can trade it in to get a special card later on. When to do that, which gives up your special ability for points at the end of the game. How to look at those points and focus and get the most out of them. It's entertaining. I wish, like I said, that the board was a little bigger. But I think this is good and I think it will please fans of the genre, either book or movie. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. <laughs>